Shalom. I am Rabbi Nathan David Avich, speaking to you on behalf of the webyeshiva.org, speaking to you from Efrat, Israel. I'm going to discuss a couple of points of this week's Parsha, which is Parsha's Vayechi. Vayechi starts out, Vayechi Yaakov, Starts with the, the life, it says the life of, of Yaakov, and then it right away goes into his death. And then it, it says he's getting close to, de to death. Uh, first of all, just as a reminder, we have several places that we've gone through in the Torah already where we see the word life used in reference to somebody's death or impending death. For example, Chaye Sora, uh, the word life was used. We saw it used with Yitzchak, teaching us a very important lesson that it's not death that counts, it's what you do while you're alive. It's life that counts. And that's why when the Tzadikim are dying, uh, they are referred to as alive. And of course, the Gemara says that Tzadikim, uh, in their, in their, the holy people uh, in their graves, uh, are more alive than some people who are not yet in their graves. Uh, and anytime you talk about Torah in the name of somebody, it's as if their lips are moving in the graves. This Parsha is called the Parsha Stuma, which means between the last words of last week's Parsha, by Yigash, and this week's Parsha, by Yechi, there is no space. Normally there is space in the Torah, uh, a line, uh, an empty line between the Parsha. Here it goes right from the end of Vayechi with no space at all. I'm sorry, right from the end of Vayechi, with no space at all into this part of Vayechi. And Rashi says that the reason for this is that Yaakov really wanted to reveal to his sons the end of time, what's going to happen at the end of time, but he wasn't able to. The, the, the Shechina did not allow, the presence of God left him for the moment left him with that, that prophecy, left him so he couldn't do it. That's one of the interpretations of, of Rashi. Another one is that uh, it's a closed Parsha because it's the beginning of the the Galus, uh, the bondage in Egypt. But we could see later in the Parsha how in fact Yaakov does succeed in telling his sons about the future. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to talk about the blessings. Yaakov gathered the children together, and he, he says, he says, Vayikra Yaakov el Banablamer. Yaakov said to his children, saying, Asifu vagidu lachem, gather together, Esashikra, Eschem, Bachri, I'll tell you what's going to happen at the end of days. He comes to Yishimri Bnei Yaakov. He says, "Gather and listen to you, sons of Yaakov, Bishimu El Yisrael Avichem, and listen to Israel, your father, Yisrael, your father." So we see in that sentence, the two names of Yaakov, Yaakov and Yisrael, are mentioned. What's the purpose of that? Well, the purpose, first of all, the word Yaakov. What does the word Yaakov come from? It comes from when Yaakov was born. He was holding on to the akev, the heel of Esau. So it refers to the lower part of the body. Yaakov refers to the, the physical aspects of a human being. Yisrael refers to the higher aspects. The name Yisrael was given after he after Yaakov fought with the angel. And he said, you know, the angel said, you have fought against man in heaven and you prevailed. So it refers to the higher, higher level. So he's telling them, first of all, that the, the blessings that I'm going to give you are blessings both on a physical level and on a spiritual level. Now, we know that the vessel to receive blessing is shalom, is peace. Uh, the Gemara tells us that. that peace is the, the blessing. So he's trying to tell them, 
to, to gather together uh, peaceably. But now we look at the blessings themselves. And the blessings are very strange because instead of blessings, they appear to be just a recitation of each individual's particular characteristics. For example, the first one he talks about, Ruvain. Uh, Ruvain, he says that, uh, basically he's, he's criticizing Ru Ruvain for being unstable. Uh, it's like water. He uh, gets angry easily. Uh, he doesn't deliberate on what he's about to do. So he's, he's pointing out that that aspect. Uh, next one is uh, Shimon and Levi. Uh, Shimon and Levi also says Shimon and Levi uh, also got angry, slew the people of of, of Shechem. Uh, so as we, so it sounds like. These really aren't, aren't blessings. What's he doing? So what he's really doing is he is indicating the potential of each person. The word Yaakov indicates to the potential that we have, the genetic potential we have when we're born as a human being. The word Yisrael means developing that potential to the highest level. Many people, many parents bless their children to become clones of themselves. Yaakov is not trying to bless the children to become a clone of him, but rather he's trying to bless them to reach their best potential. And that's a very important key. Everybody is different. And for a parent, when a parent blesses a child, it's very important for the parent to realize that in blessing that child, he should be blessing the child to reach his full potential. You know, the question that, that one is asked uh, is why weren't you the best Shlomo in the world? Why weren't you the best Yitzchak in the world? Whatever your name is, you have the ability to be the best of yourself. That's what he's blessing them with. Now at the, as I said at the beginning, Rashi pointed out that Yaakov wanted to reveal the end, but he wasn't able to. In fact, he revealed the secret of bringing Mashiach quickly. When he says as follows, Hey, Asfu, gather yourself, that I may tell you, Assemble yourselves and hear. He's saying to, to gather together. The Gomorrah in Sanhedrin says about the coming of Mashiach, that Mashiach will come, says Zahu, if B'nai Yisrael, people of Israel merit the coming of Mashiach, it'll come right then. Lo Zahu Be'itah. If they don't merit, it, it'll come at the regular prescribed time. It's going to come at a regular time, but we can speed up that time. How can we speed up that time? This is what he's telling them. Hey, Asifu, gather yourselves together. Become one. Unity. If we can learn to become unified as a united people, one for each other, we can then hasten the coming of Mashiach. So we don't have to wait. We don't have to wait for whatever the designated time is. We can move that time up so that we can come into a time of universal love and universal peace. Let us work on being Zoha to be Achishenu, to receive Mashiach now by our actions, by our actions of unity. That's the, one of the messages that Yaakov is giving to his sons. A very important message that we all need to emulate as Jews and as human beings to come together, be united in what we do, united in our love and caring for each other. Thank you very much for listening. On behalf of the WebYeshiva.org, I wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom, and God willing, we'll talk to you next week. Shabbat Shalom.